We've seen causal diagrams before. We've seen them when we talked about double blind assumption and when we've talked about the measurement error assumption. But I want to go ahead and give you guys the full tour de force of causal diagrams. So let's start off with our example that we always like, and that is a treatment affecting a given outcome. Uh, this treatment and this outcome, I, I'd like us to keep in mind the heart transplant example. So in this case, our treatment is a heart transplant, whether you get one or not, and the outcome is survival time days later. If you remember, there was a third variable, and this was the severity of the patient's condition that also affected us. Its effect was not just on the outcome, its effect instead was on the treatment itself. So the heart transplant affects the outcome, the severity of the treatment affected the likelihood on whether you would get a heart transplant. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add one more variable here, just to be very explicit. This final variable is U, uh, and it represents unmeasured variables. These are things that we can think about, but we can't necessarily measure. I'm going to say this unmeasured variable is the blood pressure. And the blood pressure, of course, affects the severity of the, uh, of the disease that this person has. Uh, as well as it will affect the outcome, the final outcome of the study. And so we've got a fairly complex causal diagram here. Uh, again, I just want to be very explicit. The A is the treatment, Y is the outcome, L in this case is a measured variable. It just means a measured variable. And I put a box around it to note that we are conditioning. We are conditioning on L if I put a box around it. Finally, U is an unmeasured variable. We can write out this in two different ways. Well, in, in two different ways. This way, so we do this in sort of like this free form chart. Uh, this is, uh, I guess you could call this a DAG. Um, or we could also write this out in terms of a single line. So we would first note our variable of interest. So let's say Y is our variable of interest. We'd start on one side with Y. We'd choose which effect we'd like to go through. Let's say we want to go through A. And we'd say Y is affected by A, which is in turn affected by L, which is in turn affected by U, which is in turn affected by U. And we'll generally, at least I will, I'll generally go ahead and add the conditioning symbol around these diagrams as well. And notice this can be written in two ways. So we, we could go in that direction, or we could necessarily go in the U direction. So Y is influenced by U, an unobserved variable blood pressure, uh, which is also in turn influencing something else, which is the severity, uh, which is sort of what, uh, sorry about that, which is what doctors will label the patient. This is how we decide whether they get a heart transplant or not, or at least the percent chance they'll get heart tra transplant or not. And this is finally in turn affecting the, uh, the treatment. Uh, so we can use these types of diagrams, these sort of uh, what I call them inline diagrams, in order to get better intuition about these. So we use these causal diagrams in order to note what associates and what affects what. So we say these things associate each other uh, when, well, in, in the obvious definition of, of, of association, when, when uh, knowing one gives us a bit of information about the other. And we say they affect if they do either directly or indirectly affect. So for example, you in this case, it affects the treatment through two ways. One, it affects the treatment directly, and two, it affects the treatment by affecting the severity, which affects us, uh, it affects the outcome by affecting the severity, which affects our treatment, which affects then the outcome itself. Okay, so I hope you guys understand what the, the sort of meaning behind all of these letters is. I hope you understand the arrows mean direct effects. Uh, I hope you understand that we can derive both causation and association uh, from these diagrams. Uh, so next time, I want to go ahead and talk about the, uh, the way that you can easily tell, four rules that you can easily tell whether variables are associated with each other.